Hello everyone, it is your favorite neighborhood liver patient. Um, anyway, so uh, today's video I just wanted to make real quick because uh, I had mentioned previously that I was getting some new doctors to maybe get some answers and you know just a little more help as I go. Uh, so I got to meet with the GI doctor and you know he had asked me a bunch of questions and about family history and things like that and asked if I'd ever been tested um, for any other conditions that could cause the cirrhosis of the liver because um, I said no when I initially went in they diagnosed me as um, alcohol induced cirrhosis of the liver and um, so he said that for the time that I was drinking because I drink about two and a half years and there were a couple periods in between where I cleansed myself and I did, wasn't drinking for a good three months or so um, in the process. So he ordered some tests. Um, one uh, for Wilson's disease, which I had mentioned previously. I'm still waiting on that. Um, but they did uh, some blood tests to test hereditary marks. Um, there is a hemochromatosis um, which can be a mutation in some of the um, iron uh, factor genes that can cause uh, in long-term liver failure and things like that so I got the results back I still need to meet with him and talk with, with him but um, so there, there there's two genes um, that they generally test for you. One's the C282Y uh, variant, and the other one is the H63D variant. So I tested positive for the H63D variant, which is a lot more uncommon. Uh, basically, uh, it can manifest into a syndrome, um, H63D syndrome. Uh, it's a very rare disorder, but uh, basically it's iron overload. So the iron can deposit itself in vital organs in your body. Uh, one of the side effects, which is one of the initial ones, is you know just a lot of body pains, fatigue. Um, some uh, mental instabilities like uh, um, which could be diagnosed as uh, um, <laughs> see see brain issues I'm telling you uh, <laughs> anyway uh, that can be diagnosed as neurological or as um, being uh <laughs> anyway I'll come back to that one Oh, by the way, liver failure, you tend to forget words sometimes and lose your place and kind of forget. So, hey, I'm doing pretty good for in the most part. So I shall continue. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, in that, and I, I remember going through a lot of body pains and nobody could explain it. Nobody could tell me why my muscles ached, uh, why my joints ached. Um, I, I kind of felt like somebody draped a hot towel over me and it was like the pain would go from my neck down into my fingers and all the way down into my legs. Um, but it was like all over and, you know, I got tested for rheumatoid arthritis, which always came back negative. And so finally I just gave up on it and said, well, whatever, I, this is something I deal with. So, uh, that tends to be one of the symptoms, um, neurological issues like in mind like a change of personality uh, mood changes forgetfulness uh, different things like that can tend to be um, a symptom doing things you normally wouldn't do that just doesn't make any sense um, that can be a symptom of it uh, so there's a lot of different things to it and this can become very serious from what I understand um, and being the case, in my case, it happened to, uh, affected my liver. Um, 
so, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, even I thought I just kind of rolled with the whole alcohol induced uh, liver failure diagnosis because while I was drinking and granted I was drinking more than I should, it did seem odd to me that um, I developed full on cirrhosis in two and a half years. Um, which seemed very odd to me, and some people said that too, but they just told me, oh, well, sometimes that can happen. And I really haven't found really anybody who's developed cirrhosis that quickly. And it's not like I was drinking to the point where I was drunk falling down. Um, you know, I mean, I definitely was drinking hard liquor every night and things like that for about a year or so to a year and a half of that period. Um, so, and as far as, so, I mean, they tested me for alcohol, of course. And when I first went in and they put these rubber bumpers on the arms of the bed, you know, afraid I'm going to have, you know, withdrawals and stuff like that. And I never did. I never had a withdrawal from alcohol. I never, I haven't touched a, a drink in more than a year um, since I hadn't even drank about a month to two months before I was even diagnosed. And so I got that. And then when I went to go see about seeing liver doctors, they, you know, would always say that. And I was made to get alcohol testing every two weeks to make sure I wasn't drinking and all that stuff. And, you know, no matter how many times I told them that I'm not drinking, I never even had a withdrawal from it. Um, I still had to go through that process and and do all that. Um, and then, you know, people like family members and people I know telling me that I'm an alcoholic and, and uh, me being a drunk is what caused my liver failure and I've ruined my body and all this stuff. And, you know, nobody once said you know, it was only two and a half years. They just, I just got labeled with it. And when I got this, uh, this information that I tested positive for this, I was kind of upset because it's like this whole time I just rolled with it. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I drank because I did. I drank and I went through depression and I went through a very hard time and, um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was drinking a decent amount and I was saddled with that stigma. And so now I've got this doctor that is finding other reasons and, um, he's out of town for a few more days. So I'm looking to meet with him next week. Uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to see what he has to say, which I'll make another video about once I do that. Also, on um, coming up here next week, I'm meeting with a new liver team, uh, which is a much better liver team than the one I was seeing. So I'll be meeting with them, and I will let everyone know how that went too. Also, I recently had a procedure uh, because I had a hard time swallowing. Um, everything gets stuck, everything that I try to eat or even drink, um, even eating Greek yogurt would get stuck in my esophagus and extremely uncomfortable, extremely painful, makes me to the point where a lot of times I don't want to eat. Um, I, I definitely avoid like breads and things like that that make it worse. Um, soda, I mean, I can't, carbonated stuff makes it worse. Um, so, you know, I just kind of dealt with that as well. And so I went in and had the procedure. Basically, they shoved this long hose um, down my nose uh, all the way into my stomach. And they make you lay on your side and drink saline water, and which is, if you've ever had it, it tastes very, it's like salt water. Um, and then you'd swallow, and then they have you sit up and do the same thing. And... Uh, it, it wasn't a fun procedure, put it that way, but um, they found out that 
the wall of my esophagus is not, the muscles aren't properly working. So I'm not sure what's going to come of that. Um, normally they said that they would do surgery and they would cut the muscle to open it up some. Um, but they obviously can't do that on me because I have the uh, cirrhosis and that can cause infection or bleeding out and things like that. Uh, so we'll save that for the same time I have the hernia surgeries, I guess, because I have three hernias as well. So, which tend to be quite painful, but I live with it. Um, so, but anyway, as I go and get more information, I'll update everyone. But I just want to say that, uh, you know, for everyone out there, even if you drank and you're not feeling right, go see a doctor, go talk to someone. Um, don't be ashamed of it. I mean, I was more interested in getting better than what they thought of me. And to be honest, most of them were pretty, pretty nice. I mean, um, didn't really have any, you know, treated poorly. I had a few doctors that labeled me as this or labeled me as that. But for the most part, most doctors were good. And if you're, if something doesn't seem right to you, like the diagnosis, like um, the reasons why, keep pushing, keep going, keep talking to people, keep find, find a new doctor if you have to. Um, it took me close to a year and a half to find um, some decent doctors that aren't willing to just treat the problem but look past the problem and find out the reason why and find out how to treat it and you know if there's a secondary cause like iron overload there are different things that they can do to at least take some of the symptoms down to um you know uh, cirrhosis is not reversible so i mean you can't just get that to heal it's not going to happen it may like i am right now where i'm able to like keep going along the plateau you know kind of flat you know uh, but, you know, as you go, it, it's just one of those things. Keep fighting. Don't stop. I mean, keep looking for reasons. So, I mean, this answer, it may not have been the answer I was looking for, but at least it's an answer. And at least it kind of gives me a direction to go in. And I'm happy for that. So, and the reason for this channel is to bring awareness to other people. I mean, there's so many things that cause liver failure and liver issues and, and things like that. It's not just from drinking. It's not, that's not the only cause. So, you know, well, um, anyway, I guess that's it for me for today. Everyone have a blessed, wonderful day. Uh, thank you so much for the support, the comments. Um, you know, I've got over 300 followers now, and I'm happy for every single one of you, and I appreciate it so, so much. Uh, so, and I just hope that I'm helping someone. I really do. Um, that's all I got is the time I have, and I'm just going to keep staying positive throughout it, right? What else are you going to do? So, all right, everyone. Have a wonderful and amazing day day or night or whatever it is for you. Bye now.